Hello, Dragonfly Swarm. Kokomi is finally coming back for her second rerun, and as I discussed in a recent video, a number of interesting things have changed about her since 3.0 came out, and especially since her very first banner way back in 2.1. She's a 5-star Hydro support unit who has garnered an interesting reputation as one of the most well-rounded units in the game, and also has one of the most terrifying fan bases in the world. I am not sorry. So, in this video today, I'm gonna discuss everything you need to know in order to make your Kokomi one of the most valuable characters on your account, discussing the intricate details about her kit, the value of her constellations, her best artifacts, weapons, and her best teams, including all of the new teams and gear that she can work with as of Sumeru's release. So, before we start, I stream multiple days a week on Twitch, so if you haven't already, you should totally follow me and consider stopping by sometime. I would love to see you there. Alrighty, let's dive into the water by discussing Kokomi's kit and explaining why it works so well with the cool new green stuff, all starting with her attack talent. She shoots fish out of her bare hands. Well, more accurately, Kokomi can perform a three-hit attack string, and these attacks are utilized most effectively as an on-field driver or support unit in which these attacks are amplified by her other abilities. Because of her animation time, it is technically most effective for Kokomi to perform into dash cancels when driving powerful off-field characters like Beto, Singcho, and Yelan, but the difference in damage isn't that crazy at all compared to just spamming her full combo and saving her stamina, so play as you see fit. As for her charged attacks, they don't have an ICD and they splash in a large area, so they're great for hydro application in dire situations, but I don't recommend spamming them because you will quickly burn through your stamina bar. But as for Kokomi's elemental skill, the most precious and pure animal in the game. When Kokomi casts her skill, she summons a stationary jellyfish for 12 seconds that will pulse with AoE hydro damage every 2 seconds, which also heals nearby allies within that AoE. It is important to note that this skill doesn't have any ICD, making the hydro application very steady, and therefore quite valuable in teams that need or want slower hydro application, which includes some dendro teams, because Kokomi can steadily trigger blooms without completely burning through the dendro aura. It's also important to note that with her first ascension passive, casting Kokomi's burst while her jellyfish is on the field will actually completely refresh its duration, allowing it to have 100% uptime, which is valuable in virtually every team Kokomi likes to be on. Moving onwards to her most recognizable ability, the Elemental Burst. Casting Kokomi's burst causes her to deal AoE damage to nearby opponents, and then, for the next 10 seconds, she gains lots of cool effects. Firstly, her normal attacks, charge attacks, and her jellyfish all gain increased damage based on her max HP, and whenever her normal and charge attacks hit enemies, they heal her entire team based one once again, on her max HP. Also note that with her 4th ascension passive, her normal and charge attack damage gains a further increase based on 15% of her healing bonus, making it quite a valuable option to slot into her stat spread. This ability is Kokomi's bread and butter in some teams, and in other teams it acts as nothing more than a means to reset your jellyfish. It entirely depends on the team, but it's always important to her for something, so having energy recharge to fund her heavy 70 energy cost is very important. With talent priority, it will depend on how you're playing your Kokomi. As an on-field character that will be utilizing her entire burst, you'll want to level all of her talents equally as they're gonna play a significant role in her team contribution. But if you're running Kokomi strictly as an off-fielder for like hydro application or whatever, you can opt to ignore her burst and her attack talent, focusing into her skill instead. Not that you won't eventually probably find use for her on-field time as well though, because they're fun. Anyways, we're moving on to Kokomi's constellations, and I'm gonna run through these, but I do want to preface that you absolutely do not need constellations on Kokomi. She offers a lot of value, in fact most of her value, at C0, but nonetheless C1 grants Kokomi the means of notable extra damage, as well as more hydro application, making this a quite valuable constellation for dedicated Kokomi players in some teams. Because remember, not every team asks for Kokomi to play as an on-fielder. This extra instance of damage does not count as normal attack damage, and it does not have any ICD, which is generally a good thing. Unfortunately though, C2 is quite a redundant constellation, because Kokomi already outputs more healing than you need in most situations, plus it only works when allies are below 50% HP, so it's not even an unconditional healing bonus at that. Therefore, I very much advise against shooting for this constellation if it's where you had planned to stop at. C3 grants 3 levels to Kokomi's burst, and while the extra levels are nice, they're far from necessary, and all it really provides is extra personal damage and slightly more healing on her attacks. C4 is honestly actually pretty nice on Kokomi since ranged units enjoy attack speed bonuses far more than melee units, plus when playing her as an on-fielder, this helps her energy management, so in general, it's one of her more useful constellations, which is quite the opposite of C5, because all this one does is provide 3 levels to Kokomi's Jellyfish. On top of being extremely expensive to reach, all it's really doing is providing more healing and personal damage. And finally, C6 is actually quite a big bonus to her personal damage output, which is useful for dedicated Kokomi players, and most specifically on-field Kokomi players, but again, not necessary to enjoy her. Essentially, all of her constellations minus C1 and C4 are tailored towards those that want to enjoy Kokomi for Kokomi, not Kokomi for her teams. So as I said, you don't need them, but if you want to increase her personal damage and her impact on a total team damage output, 
they do exist. All right. Moving onwards, we're gonna discuss Kokomi's best artifacts, which more or less haven't changed, but she has gained access to two new sets thanks to 3.0, which I will also discuss. Firstly though, Kokomi's best artifact set for personal damage output is the Ocean Hued Clam set. If you plan on playing Kokomi as an on-field unit in teams like Kokomi Taser, Mono Hydro, etc., this set will help her provide a lot of her own damage thanks to the healing bonus as well as the explodey healing bubble thingies, and Kokomi is actually one of the best candidates in the game for this set since she heals so much. Also for context, Kokomi's previous best set for personal damage was a four-piece Heart of Depths, but it cut out her other utility, whereas this one still provides personal damage and incentivizes her utility. But then again, for off-field Kokomi, it will lose a lot of value, and you'd very likely be better off with a set such as four-piece Tenacity. This set is great if your Kokomi is going to be playing off-field a lot, because she'll still be able to provide constant uptime on the four-piece passive thanks to her jellyfish, and it'll benefit her entire team. Not to mention, she gains extra healing and damage thanks to the two-piece HP bonus, so all around, this is a very valuable set on Kokomi when you want her to act as a buffer, most notably in teams like freeze comps and taser teams. However, Kokomi has technically gained access to new artifact sets with Sumeru's release, the first of which being a four-piece Gilded Dreams set. Now, I do not recommend this set for any Kokomi team except for Bloom, because the whole point of this set is to stack as much elemental mastery as possible so that when Kokomi triggers Dendro reactions, she'll deal significantly more damage. Thus, she'll essentially be completely ignoring her HP scaling and her personal damage for the sake of high bloom damage, and I do want to mention that bloom teams aren't really crazy strong right now, so this is more of a fun build than a serious build, but it is viable, so I had to mention it. But the final four-piece set I wanted to mention here is a four-piece Deepwood Memories set, and again, this set is relatively situational, as you're only going to want to use it on Kokomi and Dendro teams, such as Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, and Bloom, if other units would benefit from other sets. Luckily, Kokomi can quite comfortably act as the Dendro Shredder with this set and still focus her stats into HP, energy recharge, so on and so forth, making it a viable set if you need it on someone, but still only relevant in Dendro teams. And finally, you can obviously run any combination of two-piece Tenacity, two-piece Maidens, two-piece Clam, or two-piece Heart of Depths for general stat boosts and an easier time farming substats, with only marginal differences in viability between each combination. But as for her artifact main stats, there are quite a lot of routes you can go down depending on what your Kokomi needs. So generally, you'll want an HP or ER Sands, a Hydro Damage Goblet, and a Healing Bonus or HP Goblet. Keep in mind that Healing Bonus is actually quite valuable for Kokomi's personal damage, but all of these main stats can prove powerful on Kokomi depending on the situation. For example, as an off-field unit, I typically run HP Sands, Hydro Goblet, and HP Circlet, but if you found yourself in need of Energy Recharge, you might instead want to run something like an ER Sands, Hydro Goblet, and HP Circlet. You get the idea. Also, slightly off topic, but if you really wanted to run a main DPS Kokomi, you'll have a much easier time running Attack Sands, Hydro Goblet, and Attack Circlet than you would by trying to build her crit ratio. I promise you. And finally, for her substats, first and foremost, you're gonna want to prioritize Kokomi's energy recharge, because depending on the team, she can require upwards of 180 to 200% ER for her burst uptime. But obviously, this is somewhat subjective and can be lower if there are other hydro units or powerful batteries in the party. After you reach her energy threshold, though, you'll want to shoot for HP percent and flat HP stats, then attack stats, and after those, other stats are just mediocre. Unless you're running Kokomi as a reaction carry in Dendro teams, in which case, Elemental Mastery is priority number one. Right after energy recharge, of course. All right, I have really good news. Kokomi has an amazing selection of powerful and very easily obtainable weapons. And the best part is that some of them perform respectably similar to her expensive signature weapons, so I'm gonna go down the list of her best weapons and explain why you would want that weapon in any given scenario, starting with Everlasting Moonglow the donut. It really is a dull weapon. Yes, it's Kokomi's best in slot weapon in terms of her personal damage, but a decent amount of teams she likes to play in do not need her personal damage for high value from her kit. Nonetheless, it is still a great stat stick for Kokomi thanks to the large HP bonus as well as the healing bonus on the weapon passive, allowing her to output more damage and healing even if she's not on the field. The biggest issue I have with this weapon though is that Kokomi has access to other far more accessible options that act almost identically to Moonglow and still come in surprisingly not that far behind it in terms of value. That weapon I'm alluding to is Prototype Amber, which is a completely free-to-play craftable catalyst that also provides lots of HP and utility. Prototype Amber is interesting because it will significantly alleviate Kokomi's energy issues simply by having her cast our burst, and it also restores HP and energy to her entire team as well. Fun fact too, the HP that this weapon restores to Kokomi's team does count towards her bubble damage if she's running the clam set, so Amber is quite a versatile weapon for Kokomi regardless of how you're playing her, and although it's not as good as Moonglow for her personal damage, it's still a very respectable alternative 
alternative, and with refinements, it only gets better and better. But Kokomi does also have very good options for her more enabler and buffer playstyles as well, the first of which being Hakushin Ring. This weapon is extremely good for Kokomi and Taser teams, as it allows her to constantly buff Hydro and Electro damage for herself and her Electro carry units, and pair this weapon with a Sucrose running Thrilling Tails, and it will boast one of the highest possible damage outputs of the Taser team variants. And although it's only really notable in Taser teams, Taser teams in general are quite popular, very strong, and very versatile in who you slot into them, so there's still value to be had from running this weapon on Kokomi. Finally, for her buffer weapons, Thrilling Tails is a 3-star weapon, and at Refinement 5, it is amazing for Kokomi's teammate, because it's gonna allow her to grant a large attack bonus to whoever takes her place when she swaps off the field. Thus, it's a very strong weapon for a number of different teams, most notably Freeze teams and Kokomi's Sukokomon team, but the craziest part is that it's a 3-star, so it's extremely accessible, and Kokomi benefits from the HP bonus, so if you want to, you can level it up. It is a godsend of a weapon, and if you wanted to have Kokomi help her team's damage rather than her own, this is generally your best option for doing so. But there's also the new Fruit of Fulfillment weapon, which is free and craftable, but it's only really valuable for Kokomi and Dendro teams, and in general is kinda underwhelming on her. Technically, you could snapshot her jellyfish before the weapon passive nerfs Kokomi's attack stat, but even then, she does enjoy being on field to help trigger blooms, not just relying on her jellyfish to do so. And beyond that, other weapons that I will discuss in a moment actually provide more elemental mastery completely unconditionally, so unless you'd benefit from the energy recharge this weapon provides, or don't have other options for dental teams, I'd stick with the next weapon I'm mentioning, which is Sacrificial Fragments. It is kind of a weird weapon for Kokomi, because firstly, it's only really powerful in dendro teams, thanks to the high elemental mastery bonus it grants, and while you can use it as a means of resetting Kokomi's skill, she doesn't really need to have a skill reset, since her burst cast will refresh the skill and give it a 100% uptime anyways. So I, I would only use this weapon on her in order to stack large amounts of EM for bloom teams, making it quite situational, much like Fruit of Fulfillment, but still not a bad weapon. But that about sums up all of Kokomi's best weapons for multiple different playstyles, and while there are others, none of them are quite as valuable as the ones I've mentioned, most of which are free to obtain, so... You know, we're gonna move on to the teams. Finally, Kokomi has been introduced to a pretty wide range of new team options thanks to Dendro's release, some of which she performs very well in as opposed to her Hydro competition. So I'm gonna start by discussing some of her most powerful teams, and then we'll move into discussing the Dendro teams. One thing I've mentioned already is that Kokomi is a very versatile unit, so she can slot into a lot of teams for a lot of different reasons, but her best teams are those that involve multiple or all aspects of her kit in order to get the most value out of her, which is why I would argue Freeze teams are up there as one of of her strongest. With the introduction of Shinha and the existence of Rosaria, many players would like to substitute their Diona for these more aggressive cryo supports in their Ayaka and Ganyu teams, but the problem with this is that it leaves very little survivability for the team to work with, which can quickly become a problem if you're not literally immortal to all inconveniences this wretched world will throw at you. That's what the script says, I didn't say that. Well, I wrote the script, but... Uh, moving on. Basically, Kokomi fills the Hydro Applicator spot very well while also doubling as a powerful healer, which allows you to comfortably slot an aggressive cryo unit for potentially massive total damage increases for your team. And Kokomi's Hydro Application is easy to work with since it isn't tied to normal attacks, making it that much more convenient for Ganyu and still quite relevant for Aika, all things considered. And while yes, Mona is generally a more suitable pick for this team slot when you want more team damage, she can't provide nearly the same amount of comfort as Kokomi can, and the Kokomi team variant will still provide impressive damage damage outputs with the help of aggressive cryo supports. But also, Kokomi is quite a powerful unit to run in taser teams. When you run Kokomi in taser teams, there are a lot of ways you can go about building the team, but generally the most popular way is to run her with two electro units, most commonly Beto and Fischl, and then an animal unit, which can be Kazuha, Sucrose, or Venti. The animal unit acts simply as a shredder and a crowd controller so that Kokomi herself can drive Beto and Fischl's off-field abilities with her fast normal attacks, making for a comfortable yet very powerful team strategy. It's worth noting too that Kokomi herself can end up dealing a significant amount of personal damage when running the clam set on this team, further adding to its success as one of her most valuable team comps overall. Other powerful teams include the Sukokomon team, which involves Kokomi, Sucrose, Fischl, and Xiangling, and it actually has extremely high AoE damage ceilings, like very high, although it's really annoying to work with and execute properly, so it's somewhat of a high skill floor team, but nonetheless a very powerful option, and I'll leave a link to Tintin's in-depth explanation of this team below. Additionally, Kokomi works very well as a driver for Monohydro teams, which have recently enjoyed further 
further buffs thanks to the improvements to Hydro Resonance, and although Mono Hydro and any Mono Element team suffers from clear drawbacks, it's still quite powerful, given the right setups and team building, and Kokomi just happens to drive the team very well. But now we gotta discuss these Dendro teams, because they are explosive, they are hyper, they are very fun. Thanks to the Bloom reaction, Kokomi has gained access to many teams that are built around the sub-variants of Bloom, so Bloom teams, Hyper Bloom teams, and Burgeon teams, but firstly with regular Bloom teams, it's definitely not a strong team comp outside of certain AoE scenarios, but it's still viable and quite fun to work with. Generally, you're gonna want Kokomi to be the only Hydro unit, slotting a Dendro unit in the second slot, and then the third and fourth slots can be filled by any number of Dendro, Cryo, or Animal units in order to complete the team. When you add a Cryo unit to the team, it turns it into a Fridge team, making it a lot more convenient to trigger Blooms because enemies are frozen and can't run away from the Bloom Seeds. Plus, against frozen enemies, Kokomi's Hydro application won't burn through Dendro Auras so quickly, which is a good thing, because it means more Blooms. And obviously, in this team, since Kokomi is the trigger for the reactions, you're gonna want her to stack as much EM as possible, meaning you should run sets like 4-piece Guild of Dreams with Sack Frags, things like that. In general though, regular Bloom teams are her weakest Dendro team, but they are fun. Burgeon teams, however, not Virgin, Virgin. I see, I've seen the autocorrect on Twitter. It's Virgin teams, I would argue, are a bit stronger with higher potential. Although, with Kokomi in mind, it pretty much requires you to use Toma in the second slot, a Dendro unit in the third slot, and the fourth slot can be filled by any number of characters, but generally there aren't currently any outstanding options for this last slot, so it's most popular to opt for characters like Fischl or a second Hydro unit simply to keep up with the demanding nature of Virgin reactions. Again, this team is pretty difficult to work with right now, but I would argue Kokomi is one of the better Hydro enablers to run with this team since she provides unmatched survivability as well as steady Hydro application, but there are other Hydro options that can work instead. And finally, with undoubtedly her strongest Bloom team subvariant currently, Hyper Bloom teams are quite fun and pretty strong to work with regarding Kokomi. In Hyper Bloom teams, the goal is very similar to Burgeon in that you'll want Kokomi, a Dendro unit, and an Electro unit in order to create Bloom seeds and turn them into Hyper Blooms. In the fourth slot, once again you can fill any number of Hydro, Dendro, or Animal characters, but if I'm honest, I found the team significantly less annoying to work with when I used a second Dendro unit in this last slot, because it'll help to keep up your Dendro aura as well as granting your Electro unit extra EM for their Hyper Bloom damage. Not to say that's the strongest variant of Hyper Bloom, but it's definitely one of the most comfortable variants. In Hyper Bloom teams, Kokomi is there to act as an enabler and in my case a driver, so the Clam set can work well in this team, but you can also use the Deepwood set if you'd prefer equipping your Dendro character with 4 star sets such as Instructors or Exile. Currently I'd say Kokomi is one of the best Hydro units to run in this team just because of the practicality of running her as the team's healer and enablers. But that isn't to say that other Hydro units can't make it stronger though, because especially with Hyper Bloom teams, faster Hydro application generally works better, making characters like Singcho more worthwhile if you want to sacrifice survivability and comfort for pure damage. In general, with Kokomi's shiny new Dendro teams though, a lot of their potential is restricted because of our lack of a powerful Dendro character roster currently, because the reactions themselves are pretty strong, but building teams around them is somewhat difficult. And all things considered, Kokomi does a very good job at filling for multiple roles in these teams, even the ones outside of Dendro teams, because of her jack-of-all-trades playstyles. So she's a valuable unit to glue a team together and enables them as you see fit, which is kind of why I have high hopes for her potential in these Dendro teams as we gain access to more characters that fit into them. But anyways, that about sums up this Sumeru Kokomi guide, so if you enjoyed it or it helped you in any way, please leave a like and consider subscribing because I would very much appreciate it and it would very much help my channel. Also, feel free to join my Discord server to stay updated with my content and my community because they're super swag even though they literally forced me to pull for Kokomi. It's whatever. It's fine. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to make this guide if that didn't happen, but still, man, it hurts.